Good old Frosty Boy. A weapon fit for Thor himself. But I barely touched it in my playthrough. My friend used it a lot, but I was more of a sword guy. But that aside, I know how popular this weapon is on Reddit and on YouTube, but since the Frostner isn't a Mistlands tier weapon, is it good enough to fight with the big boys in the Mistlands? Let's give it a shot. I also definitely need to train up my character of skill in clubs because I also want to try out the Demolisher, and a lack of skill means less damage. The Frostner does blunt damage, of course, but it also does frost damage, which I'm curious to see in action against Seekers. The spirit damage won't be much help since Seekers are immune. They're not exactly undead creatures, but the frost damage should slow Seekers down for a short time, and from what I've read, the butt end of a soldier is weak to that sort of damage. So I may try that, but but I've not really been very good at managing my whole stamina thing well enough to run around and, you know, do the whole reach around. So maybe it will work, maybe it won't, I don't know. Anyway, you've seen me take on these two Seekers here, and my first impressions are solid. It seems to do pretty well. And hey, look at that, we have another Dwarven friend helping us out. This encounter starts mid-battle because I'm an idiot and I didn't actually set my recording software to pre-record long enough, but I started battling a soldier when a seeker came along, closely followed by a brave gray dwarf. You know, the Frostner is really fast. I actually really like it. You can actually get some three-hit combos in there between soldiers' attacks. I actually think I might start liking this thing. It wasn't easy because of the terrain, but I was eventually able to get that Seeker alone, and I killed it. Now I can just focus. As you can see, I do try the whole reach around thing, but I miss terribly. I'm not giving up though. I do want to see if this thing does a lot of damage to the butt, so I go for the reach around again, and it comes back around. But I'm not discouraged. Here we go. Let's do this. And... Yep, I see some yellow damage. It's not crazy high, but it is some yellow damage. But I just decided to murder it in the face, and let's get a couple three hits in there. While it does put up a relatively decent fight, I'm battling more of my stamina than the actual soldier itself. But after a battle, yeah, we know, I kill it. It's glorious. It dies. Moving on. But wait, there's more! Another bug wants to come kill me, and I feel like this one knows how to use the terrain to its advantage. My hammer keeps going through the little bugger, even though it can hit me just fine. That's just the way it goes. After a minute of this, I just decide to meet it where it's at, and... Good old-fashioned murder. After coming through the portal again, I immediately get yelled at by a sky jellyfish, and me being the impatient guy that I am, I can't seem to hit it very well. It ends up lighting me on fire, and I don't really pay too much attention because I'm trying to focus on popping the balloon. Ticks we have here start jumping at me, and now's when I start to notice that the Frostner, at least in my current club's level, it doesn't seem to kill them in one hit. I don't like that, but I guess I'll have to raise that level. It's not something I'm used to. Anyway, I take more hits, I'm on fire, I panic, and eventually, yeah, I succumb to the Sky Jelly's might, and it taunts me as my life fades away. Well, it's naked rescue mission time. Sky Jelly sees me immediately, but I'm determined. Like an idiot, though, I jump from the high tower, forgetting that I'm actually not wearing the Featherfall cape, but I'm okay. With ticks coming for me, I grab my gear, and after trying to put it on, I sprint across the nearest ridge where I can more safely don my gear. Back into the fight I go now. Obviously, this isn't exactly a great test for the Frostner, but eventually the jellyfish crosses right above the ridge, so I take out old Frosty Boy and try to get a couple good hits in. Sadly, it doesn't work too well. It shakes me off pretty quick, so I go back to the old shooty-shooty tactic. I won't bore you with the whole fight since this is supposed to be a frosty video, but yeah, I win. It loses. Let's continue. But hey, I guess let's watch me do a terrible job dispatching the ticks from that sky jellyfish fight. Man, I really suck at this. I was missing all over the place. These things are just really hard to hit sometimes. Yeah, it's annoying.
Here I came upon a Lone Seeker, and I'm still using the shield at this time, but eventually I do put it away. Uh, I'm practicing my golf swing here, and I'm really satisfied with how much damage this thing does. It's amazing. It almost kills the entire thing in one hit. I love it. And another one right away. Same golf swing tactic. Almost dead immediately, then very dead. I'm having fun. So here I am, having a lovely time with this Seeker here, and another guest decides to join. Uninvited, I don't like it, but just a quick note, I'm not using the shield here by the way. Uh, I'm trying to test how the Frostner parries on its own. Seems to be pretty effective. I like it. Golf Swing takes that one out, and hey, look at that. Our friend decides to come check up on us. Thanks, bud. And here we go, we finally found another Seeker Soldier. So I do an ODST drop on top of its thorax, and we begin our dance. A nice golf swing there, and I toy with it a bit. It calls for help for some friends, but nobody comes. Just using the Frostner to parry, by the way, and I'm trying to get a good old reach around here and there for some yellow damage. Everything's going very smooth, and I'm feeling confident with this weapon. I'll skip forward a bit, but you know how it goes. It's a long battle, but I wear it down and bathe in its innards. This guy right here buzzes around me, and then I try to parry it, but I fail miserably. Then after a roll, I try to see what I can do, it attacks, and it just kind of seems confused for a bit. I don't know what's going on, it doesn't know what's going on. Then I parry it, and I try to dispatch it, but the terrain gets in the way. It's a little bit higher, I'm a little lower, that's just how it goes. Then after a few more hits and a bunch of misses right there because of the terrain, of course, it joins its friends among the dead. So the sun starts going down, and I'm feeling confident with this weapon. But there's one thing we haven't seen yet. And then, as if I had mentally summoned it, a one-star seeker comes out to play. I'm not messing around, I keep the shield up for this, and I'm able to pretty effortlessly parry its attacks. Okay, well yeah, at least most of them. It makes a grave mistake and turns its back, so of course I take advantage of the situation. Then I decide to just kind of jump on it and ride it. No, this was totally not intentional. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a good battle. It does end up getting some hits in. I get a couple golf swings in there, and eventually, after a good duck and roll and one final glorious backswing, I come out the victor. So, of course, the big question, I'm sure you already know the answer to, is the Frostner any good to tackle the Mistlands? Uh, yeah, it's actually fantastic. It's most certainly up to the Mistlands challenge. It's quick to swing, it slows enemies, and it can really pack a punch. And it seems to block and parry more than well enough, even without a shield. I'll likely be using it a lot more often. So what weapon should I bring to the next Seeker Hunting mission? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.